other ones? Yes, hello, hello, hello. Good evening. We're about to have some real fun, so hang on. And welcome to our Wednesday night service. We're going to start with the meditation. So if you're here, phones off. And uh, those joining us on Zoom and Facebook, thank you so much and welcome. So we're going to take a few minutes here and just center ourselves in God is the love that I am. Just let yourself center that. And when your mind wanders off to did I put the laundry in the dryer? Bring it right back to God is the love that I am.
Ah, what joy, what joy it is to rest ourselves in God is the love that I am. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service. We're so grateful you're here with us in person. Welcome to all those on Zoom and Facebook Live. And we're going to start with, I don't know, what, Sam? Let's start with Gia Shabbati leading us in singing, God is in this place. There you go. Gia, thank you, Sam. So, let's pray. Let's take a breath right here. That breath, that is the breath of God that is always breathing each and every one of us. God is right within our very physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and astral being. So tonight we are in that alignment. We are open. We are available to hear the word, to allow ourselves to be lifted, transformed, and healed tonight. And we bless our beloved Reverend Sydney, right where she is. She is an open channel, and God is flowing through her like a river that washes each and every every one of us to our higher yet to be, to a greater yet to be. We listen, we hear, we understand, and something glorious is happening. Tonight, we are healed. Tonight, we are transformed. Tonight, we are blessed. And tonight, we sing with absolute joy in every area of our being. Thank you, beloved Mother, Father, God. And we bless Sam. We bless Gia. We know that they are bringing forth a word in song and melody and harmony and word that lifts us and touches our hearts. We bless our tech team because we wouldn't be here without them. Thank you. Thank you, tech team. Thank you all who are bringing this service to something glorious and magnificent because we are saying yes. Yes, yes. Yes, God is, I am. Yes, God is, I am. Yes, this, per this time together is magnificent. Yes, yes, yes. We are in the yes of good, the yes of flow, the yes of God. And I'm so grateful to know that this is the truth. I release this word into the law of mind where it is made manifest. And so it is. Together we say, amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever Amen. Will 
words I have to say may well be simple, but they're true. Until you give your love, there's nothing more that we can do. Thank you. And the shoes. <laughs> wow. Hey, how are you all? I'm Reverend Sydney. I'm so glad you're here. <sighs> In 1962, there was a yes that happened. The yes was in the world of music. The yes was in the world of broadcast technology. And four young men from England with long, dark hair, which at the time was just absolutely unheard of, said yes to being on the Ed Sullivan Show. And that was the Beatles. The world has not been the same since. In 1969, there was a yes that happened between scientists and astronauts. And astronauts from this country landed and walked on the moon. The world has not been the same since. In 1970, I walked through the doors of a church of religious science, and my world has not been the same since. There were all of these different things that are involved in in a, a yes, a collective yes, or an individual yes. And tonight I want to talk about this idea of the courage to dream. Now it's in alignment with the season for nonviolence, 
which was originally founded by the Gandhi Foundation. And Season for Nonviolence is based on the principles of Cesar Chavez, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and of course, Mahatma Gandhi. And so it begins every year on the anniversary of Gandhi's assassination, and the last day, and this year it'll be April 4th, is, well, it's always April 4th, <laughs> the anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And throughout that time, what is offered are practices to create a peaceful world, starting within so that we might bring it without, starting within so that we might carry it out here, starting within so that as we move into the world, we can be that, that power for good, that awareness of good, that awareness of love, that nonviolent celebration of God. So, the courage to dream. You know, I was, I was thinking of a song today as I was working on my talk, and it's by Jana Stanfield. Um, and you might know Jana, Gio, Gia. <laughs> and you probably know about Jana. She's this wonderful songwriter, singer in Nashville. And she wrote a song called, If I Were Brave. And it goes like this. What would I do if I knew that I could not fail? If I believed, would the wind always fill up my sail? How far would I go? What would I achieve? Trusting the hero in me. If I were brave, I'd walk the razor's edge where fools and dreamers dare to tread. I'd never lose faith even when losing my way. Which step would I take? Today, if I were brave. And this is interesting because Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote over 150 years ago, a hero is no braver than an ordinary man or woman, but he is brave five minutes longer. So what does being brave have to do with pursuing a dream? And for that matter, why do dreams even matter? You know, some of us, many of us, might have grown up in homes where the family's main concern was just getting bills paid, staying alive, escaping crime or violence. The idea of pursuing dreams might have been um, taken in as selfish or a luxury that just could not, that no one had time or energy for. But there is common to all of us a dream of possibility. Even if we have buried and ignored our impulses and our deep soul agreements for most of our lives, we still have a voice within us that will not be ignored or stilled. So Howard Thurman was a black man who was a minister and a teacher and also mentor for Dr. Martin Luther King. And I read his material a lot because it just moves me so much. And this is a passage from an address he gave at the 1980 commencement at Spelman College. It's called The Sound of the Genuine. There is something in every one of you that waits, listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. And if you cannot hear it, you will never find whatever it is for which you are searching. And if you hear it and then do not follow it, it was best you had never been born. Now, I've read that passage before, and every time I read it, I get truth bumps. I just get so excited about it. You know, because he also goes on to describe why we need to listen for that sound of the genuine. You are the only you that has ever lived. Your idiom is the only idiom of its kind in all of existence, and if you cannot hear the sound of the genuine in you, you will all of your life spend your days on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. (sighs) That got me. It got me here. How many of us are spending our lives in, in some sort of agreement, silent, known or unknown agreement that we keep other people comfortable or that we keep other people appeased or that we just go with the the, the status quo in order to not rock the boat or cause anybody else some sort of disruption or discomfort. And in um, December of 1945, 
in the hills of Egypt in a clay jar. I, I, there were these papyrus things that were falling apart, and it's what we call now the Nag Hammadi Gospels. Nag Hammadi is the town in Egypt near where these were found. And the hidden gospel of Thomas is what many scholars now study. And this is what he wrote. And it's believed that these are the closest to the words of Jesus the teacher. And that's what makes it even more profound. At least for me, that's what makes it more profound. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Now, that seems rather dire. However, if we consider the message of Jesus the teacher and so many other teachers and leaders and philosophers and prophets and, and those who have sought to give us a sense of more life and more possibility in this world, the idea is that the kingdom of heaven is within us. This infinite power of love, of peace, of presence, of intelligence, of possibility, of potentiality is not something we get from the people around us. They may energize us and inspire us to, to move in that field, but it is within us already. And to the degree that we are willing to know that and to agree with it and to acknowledge it and celebrate that, then we get to bring that forth and we get to be in that kingdom of heaven, that joy. So heaven not up here in a geographical location, and by the way, hell not down here in some geographical location, but all within our own thinking. And if we don't bring forth this kingdom of heaven that is already at residence seeking to inform us and to, as I like to say, define and divine us, if we don't bring that forth, then we, we live lives of, of, of just such narrowness. And as that gospel says, it will destroy you because who wants to live a life halfway lived? I don't. I don't want to live in that safety. You know, in this teaching of science of mind, we seek to cultivate an awareness and to live in, an, in that all-encompassing awareness of the presence of God, that it, it, we teach that it surrounds and fills us, that it, it permeates our very cells, our very being, and it informs who, what, and how we are, again, to the degree we're willing to believe and practice believing it practice believing it because this is not an observable spirituality it's practicable spirituality we can study it but if we're not using it then that's really that's kind of a nice mental exercise but why don't we actually learn and approach it with with a sense of wow this is my path this is my destiny or this is my guidance or this is my inspiration in fact i'm i'm just now thinking of a story that dr mark told me um, some of you know that I am a big fan, hold on, technical, um, of Johnny Coleman. Johnny Coleman um, was a black unity minister. She was the first unity minister, black unity minister, to graduate, and this is in the 50s. And they made her live not in the village of Unity Village, but because she was black, she had to live off campus. She went on to found this huge community in Chicago, the biggest New Thought community in the world, actually. And she, she spoke one year at a Silomar, which was our annual conference, um, and that used to happen every year, years, and we, we still do annual conferences, but just not in that location anymore. And she, it was pretty funny, she came up to the podium and she held up the Science of Mind textbook and she said, have you all read this? Because it's really good, but from everything I'm seeing and hearing, you all don't know what's in this. And, you know, she read them. <laughs> she read the room. And I think that's so true because this is not an instant belief system or a get-rich-quick kind of thing. In fact, Ernest Holmes encouraged study and interrogation. Like, really look at this so that, that you, you know that it works for you. He knew that a pearl of great price has only the value we give it, and the price we must pay is our attention and our intention. Intention. 
And he said this about those deep dreams that we hold within our hearts and souls. That sound of the genuine, right? Free yourself forever from the thought that God may be pleased by a life of sacrifice, that the world is any better because of your misery, and that righteousness is more perfectly expressed through poverty than abundance. Know that the greater abundance of every good thing which you are bringing out in your life, the more perfectly you are satisfying the divine urge within you. What is your divine urge? What is the sound of your genuine? What is that calling? Have you taken like a, a dream or passion inventory lately? Have you kind of checked it out? You know, our dreams evolve just as we do. And it might be that you're on a path of a dream that is no longer part of your contemporary self, your contemporary consciousness. Everything changes. You know, our dreams change, they morph, and they expand into wonderful possibilities if we let them. And the other thing about these dreams is if we follow them and it's time for them to shift, they have everything necessary within them to guide us into that place of shift so we can't go wrong. We can't make a mistake. If we trust, trust and listen to the sound of that genuine within us, we, we get to move in this field of God this infinite field of God, glorious organized design. Not God up here who is keeping score and is moody and capricious and has clearly fallen off his anger meds, but no, not a God of personality, a God of presence. So I think often we don't listen to our dreams because um, we think we're not good enough or our fear stands in the way of moving forward. We just get afraid. So I got to tell you, no dream is ever given to anyone fully formed. It just doesn't happen that way. But it does contain within it everything needed for the journey. And in fact, I got to think about what I just said. I think the dream, the kingdom of heaven is there and it is formed. And we, as we embrace it, we expand on this journey. We grow and we shift and we we can turn left, we can turn right, because all of it is still on that path of enfoldment, and it's perfect. So you and I didn't arrive fully formed. You know, we were born with all the physiology we needed to grow and learn. But any levels of mastery or accomplishment, be they biological, emotional, creative, or spiritual, happen little by little, each thing leading to the next little thing, right? So the fear that many of us hold is thinking that, well, I have to be an expert now. If I want to be a painter, I want to be an artist, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be a pianist, I want to do whatever that thing is, I have to be an expert. And here's what's really important to remember. God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the called. God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the called. So when you are hearing that voice, when you're hearing that dream, it's not because you're ready now, it's because now is the beginning of the journey. If you were ready now, it would be an entirely different voice, an entirely different call, an entirely different dream. When it comes to being afraid, I found this quote years ago from Carlos Castaneda that changed my relationship with fear. Fear is like the blackbird that sits on your shoulder and tells you to be careful. And I thought, wow, that's kind of adorable. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sits on your shoulder. And I think about it like, okay, so sits on the shoulder but doesn't get to drive my bus. Can be a passenger on my bus, on my life, but doesn't get to navigate it. But can tell me, watch out for that over there. Watch out for that over there. Be awake, be aware. It's the voice of intuition, but it does not get to be in charge of all of it. You know, the thing is, we live in this universe of total authenticity, authenticity and integrity with itself. No physical law ever impedes or gets in the way of any other physical law, and no principle denies the existence and integrity of any other principle. And I take a lesson from this, because, you know, gravity doesn't argue with light. Gravity doesn't say, well, I matter more. So I'm going to do what I do, and I just there's no time for you over here, so just go away, light. Light doesn't argue with Bernoulli's principle of flight, right? Light doesn't say, well, up, up, got to shine right now. We can't have any planes. 
Flight doesn't argue with electricity. It really doesn't. All of these principles just are. And when we live authentic lives of integrity and self-honesty, you and I just are. And actually, even when we don't, we just are. The integrity is still absolutely there. The integrity of God is still there. The perfection, that innate spiritual perfection, not the perfection of performance. It's a different thing. The perfection of that spiritual, divine, creative inspiring energy, that which holds the planets in their orbits and doesn't keep them careening into each other. That doesn't mean that if I, if I drop, what, what am I getting? Well, everything's breakable up here. If I drop something, it's not going to go flying off into the world. I, I stay here. Have you noticed I'm not flying? Gravity works. Light works. It all works. You and I have that same integrity within us. We are designed by that integrity as that integrity we are partakers of all of it. Our innate authenticity just is. Our divinity just is. Our integrity as God beings just is. So those urges and dreams are part of the necessary hmm, expression of God's authenticity and integrity. So what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What would you do even if you thought, well, I probably will fail, but I have to do it? And I think that that's part of the big question that we look at. Um, maybe the idea of dreams and courage is about something else. Maybe it's not necessarily about the, ex the, the performance, but it's about the expression. Maybe it's having the courage to listen to that voice and to do it regardless, right? Um, for many of us, the courage to show up for ourselves is hard won. And what I know is when I do something, the courage doesn't happen first. The activity of doing that which I am afraid of funds, F-U-N-D-S, the courage. And actually funds, F-U-N-S, that's true. It makes it more fun. <laughs> but the courage doesn't come first. The desire, the dream come first. And I teach a pretty noble idea that I heard some time ago called live into your vision living into our vision. And it means you be that vision now. You be that dream now. You live in and as that in every part of your life. And when your, your visions and your dreams are the navigation system, the path opens. Is it easy? Mm -mm. Is it comfortable? Absolutely not. But we're not here for ease or comfort. We're here to change the world. And Emerson wrote this, God will not have his work done by cowards. So when I hear the words dream and courage, I can't help, like probably like you do, I, I just keep thinking of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. His I Have a Dream speech that he gave August 28th, 1963. You know, his words are part of the fabric of this country, and yet we still have a long way to go to realize them and really live into that vision, to own it for ourselves. You know, the, the phrases resonate. You know, he said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. And, you know, I read the text of his speech because I wanted to unpack some of the deeper values that were in there. And I didn't remember this part. And he said, let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. One with God is a majority one with God. We have a long way to go, I think, before we really, really fully uh, walk the talk about oneness. But think about it, one with God. We are all here as God. And when we recognize that oneness, whoa, we can, we can change the world. You know, there's an integrity of the human soul that calls for, calls for recognition and announcement. So, Part of walking that talk of oneness is, by, is that we have to be willing to be uncomfortable and to admit, acknowledge, and be willing 
to embrace that the idea that there are many, many people on this planet who have yet to experience full opportunity, education, justice, equanimity, and access. Gandhi lived in service to a dream of a free India where all would live without fear of discrimination, poverty, violence, the caste system. And as he walked from province to province to spread this message of nonviolence, trying to model peace and urging nonviolence, he encountered and experienced almost every degradation imaginable. He was constantly threatened, his family was always in danger, and he did finally die from the bullets of an assassin. He didn't live to see a peaceful and safe India, but his dream fueled his passion and his courage. God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the called. Our dreams qualify us. Our dreams qualify us. Regardless of what your perception or belief in God is or of God, our dreams qualify us. They have everything there. They inspire, they teach, they lead us, and yes, they even crush us sometimes. But man, do they qualify us. And I'm just thinking, thinking again about that quote. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. And if you do not bring forth what is within you, it will destroy you. We have these precious lives we're here for just a moment on this planet. So whether there is fear going on or distraction or whatever it is, your dreams qualify you. You are God. You are God. And I want to close with this quote that, that Nelson Mandela offered. And it's from Marianne Williamson. And I know that you've all heard it, but just take it in for a moment. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plain small doesn't serve the world. So step into those dreams, live into those visions, live as those dreams. Your dreams are waiting for you to come true. Will you say yes? yes. Okay, let's pray. Thank you. In this field of yes, in this field of pure potentiality, in this field There is a place. There is an absolute place of peace, of joy, of love. And perhaps this field lies between you and your dream. Perhaps this field seems to lie between oneness and separation. Perhaps this field lies between peace and violence. But in that field is that place where the oneness, the presence of God is all that is known, all that is celebrated, all that is recognized. It is the truth of who and what we are. It is that field within each of us. Will you meet yourself there? Will you meet yourself there in that field and hear the sound of the genuine, the sound of the authentic self, your soul calling to you and inviting you to grow, grow, grow. Step into that field of possibility. For in that field, each of us, we are immersed in the absolute, overwhelming infinity that is God. And there is none else. There is nothing else, no one else. It is just God. So I invite you to See yourself in that field and to let all boundaries dissolve between you and your dreams. Let all boundaries dissolve between you and any healing which you are seeking. Let all boundaries dissolve and any thoughts of separation, of violence, of anything less than 
that beautiful field of one power and one presence, infinite, infinite, omnipotent good that we call God. That field is the truth of each of us. We are the celebration of God in that field, and we are here to dance. We are here to dance together as God, for we are so fully connected in and as God and with each other that there can be nothing else but that as we choose to know that that is so. So where there appears to be disharmony, I know that God is active and present there. And where there appears to be physical limitation or a need for healing, I know that God is absolutely active and present there. And if there is someone in your family who appears to need something, something, whatever it is, I know that God is absolutely fully active and present there. And if there's any situation in this world that is calling to you, be, be it a situation across the planet or the laundry that's still in the dryer, I know that God is fully active and present there. Limitless, limitless, omnipotent good. Ah, oh, what a yes we have been created into and as. So I know for each of us that we are the divine. We are all of that. We shine with that. We are that yes. And I am grateful to know that it is so. Indeed, this treatment is the demonstration. It is the demonstration for in our recognition is the acceptance and the knowing. And we are so touched and embraced that we can not but be anything less than divine and infinite. So I accept that this is absolutely so. And I invite you to say with me, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So with a full and grateful heart, I release this word knowing it is done. It is so, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. you to hold out your hand knowing that is full it is absolutely full to overflowing with the abundant good that is God the abundant wealth the prosperity all that is so take that offering whether you write a check or whatever it is you do take that and hold it to your heart as we stay say together please from the love of pure spirit within me I bless this gift I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper it is evidence of my faith and belief it does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly and so it is it always blessed always for the arms of God surround us let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say Yeah. Hey. 
paying attention to us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gia. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Reverend Sydney, so much to ponder there, huh? Thank you. I know, really. So we have some announcements, announcements, announcements. Um, so there's many, <laughs> there's many different ways you can give. <laughs> Charge! <laughs> Um, you go to nhcrs.org and you can give there. You can um, give in a variety of places. So we encourage you, if you've been fed at all this evening, if anything touched your heart or spoke to you, please tithe to where you've been blessed. Thank you so much for that. Um, we have prayer with the practitioner uh, here in person and on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, please rotate yourself over to Zoom and you can enjoy that magnificent prayer with the practitioner. Next Wednesday evening, Reverend Sydney. She will, our service starts at, at 6.50, meditation and 7 o'clock, and her topic is season of nonviolence, inner and outer freedom. Inner and outer freedom. We have the grief support on Zoom, facilitated by our beautiful uh, Carol Winokur. It meets this Sunday, 1 p.m. on Zoom only. And here, really, you guys, for real, not kidding you. You want to deepen your spiritual practice. You want to really deepen your understanding with God. Dr. Mark is offering the foundation class starting February 15th on Zoom. I'm telling you, changed my life. This 14-week life-changing class is the first in a series of the Center for Spiritual Living sponsored core curriculum, um, and it's open to everyone. So if you're interested in the uh, practitioner path, you need to take this class. But if you just want to deepen your practice, if you just want to have a deeper relationship with God, this is the class for you. So please, join Dr. Mark starting February 15th and deepen your practice in prayer, meditation, affirmations, and spiritual mind treatment. You can sign up where? NHCRS.org. Thank you. And this Sunday, no, February 27th at 11.30 a.m., we have our annual meeting. It's the membership meeting, and it's held in person or on Zoom. The Zoom link is the same one that you use to join us on Wednesday and Sundays, and we look forward to you joining us for that celebration. And and please, all of you, just join us in consciousness here. We want to go back to two services, 945 and 1130. So let's hold that in our hearts and our consciousness, and we are in agreement. We have a united consciousness. This will be happening March 6th. Thank you. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. And a Zoom virtual patio, a Sunday and Wednesdays, before and after service. Please join us for that. And the most wonderful thing, start your day with meditation, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. Again, anything you need to know is on nhcrs.org. Thank you so much. Peace and blessings. Love you all. I want to acknowledge and thank some people. Um, our practitioner holding vigil tonight is doing so from the comfort of her own upper room at home, and that's Carrie Herrera. So, yay! Facebook Live support is our own Dean Regan. And man, you know what? He's three hours ahead. So definitely give him, because he's in Rhode Island doing, no, yeah, no, Delaware. He's in Delaware holding this consciousness and doing Man, that's commitment. Zoom support, Barbara Bear, Ray Regan, and Brenda Jordan are doing our Zoom and our co-hosting and all of that stuff. In the sanctuary, Adam Keshen. Colleen Butler and Lauren Thompson greeted and ushered you in. Sanctuary media team is Doreen Rima, Nick, Nikki Savara, Savara. You know, I should slow down. Doreen Remo, Nikki Savara, Colleen Blut Butler, and Blair Thompson. Gia Chimbati, did I say it right? You can get her music on iTunes, and you should, because it's really good. Sam Krieger, Liz Racy, I'm Reverend Sydney, and before we close, um, I actually, there's something we need to do. We have, um, our, the president of our board is Blair Thompson, and you know, he's kind of shy, but we're gonna get him up here. Come on, Blair. All right, Mr. President, I just have 
I'll tell you what, take off your mask so they can see you and I'll stand over here. Yeah, they do. You're on camera, baby. And this is just what I want to say. Happy birthday to you, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you, Mr. President. Happy birthday, dear Blair. Happy birthday to Let's just pray out. <clears throat> oh, by the way, cake. We have cake. So if you're at home, you're, you better go buy your own cake because we have cake. Because <laughs> Lauren brought birthday cake for everybody. So we'll be, we'll, be in, we'll be partaking of that on the patio. But right now, so just join with me in consciousness as we know that this is a place of peace, of love, of glory, of joy, and that we carry it with us. For it's simply a reflection of that which is already within. And I know for each of us that we are a blessing to ourselves and to this world and that all life, all life is working together to spin into that place, that marvelous, wonderful place of ever unfolding good. I bless this church. I bless every church. I bless all paths to God, all sanctuaries everywhere, all synagogues, all temples, all mosques, all ashrams, knowing that God is everywhere active, everywhere present, and how wonderful that we know this and we dance in that. And we just say, yes, 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 and so it is. Amen. Bless you. Bless you.